Hello everybody, this is Joni from Designs by Joni. Uh, I was coming back to um, show you another project that I'm in the process of doing. And um, this is um, a uh, process, I, I thought that um, a lot of you people, I know I was like that, uh, about this time of the year you have been through the snow and you've been through the cold weather and you are ready to see some beach scenes and uh, get out on that beach and have some fun. So I thought that I would try to bring the beach to you if you couldn't come to the beach right now. So this is what I have decided to do. And um, it has a lot of the shells that um, you just walk along on the beach and find. And if you have a lot of the shells that you have uh, collected from the beach during all of your vacations and things like that, and you don't know really what to do with them, but you don't want to throw them away, uh, this is a nice little project that um, you could do that um, you would enjoy doing. I feel quite sure of that. Uh, I had one of these um, several years ago. I made one, and I made my mother one. And uh, then one of my sisters, uh, Pat, she made one. And we really loved them. But um, I lost mine because um, uh, we had a, um, we, we had lived in our house that we had built for about 30, 35 years probably. And there was a small stream in front of our house, about 150 feet or so in front of our house down over an embankment. And um, we never had trouble from the water, but um, one night uh, it came a flash flood. And the water got up into our house uh, for uh, 18 inches into our house. And it just destroyed all of our furniture and uh, papers and bedding and all such things as that. You might know what it would do to the inside of a house. And... Um, we had built this house ourselves because um, we built houses for a living. And, of course, we had it built the way we wanted it and everything. So, um, uh, it was really, it was really hard on us. So, um, my husband, uh, we all began cleaning it out and everything, trying to salvage what we could. But, um, uh, some of the things just were not salvageable. And I had taken my painting, uh, this this picture, down not long before that and had just put it in my closet because I was going to put something else in where this one was hanging. And uh, um, it got in the water. And the water just... Um, if my, I wasn't there when my husband was cleaning that out. So if I had been there... I would have tried my best to have salvaged it and washed it and everything with disinfectant and, because I really loved it so much. But I wasn't there, so uh, he tossed it. And uh, so we were, um, we had to go back in, strip the sheetrock out up halfway the walls and uh, put all new carpeting in, new flooring and, and all the bathrooms and the kitchens and utility rooms and things like that. And um, we didn't have any flood insurance, so our homeowners would not pay anything on it. And um, so it, it was a blow to us. So he uh, moved in one room. He cleaned one room up really good. And uh, he moved into that one little room, and uh, I moved into an apartment uh, about 20 miles away. And um, he would stay there and work when he came home at night on the house and um, so um, it uh, he got the house basically about back well he got it completely restored and he'd had some people helping him and everything and then we would go up there and help anytime that we could and um, we were ready to um, we had moved the furniture and everything back in our, our new furniture and um, we had to uh, get new drapery. It, it was just, you couldn't believe the sight. Anyway, we got everything restored. And my son was getting married. And so I had told him that I would have uh, him and his wife a uh, shower the next day. 
Uh, and uh, so we had made arrangements to have the shower the following day. That night it came another flood. And this one had eight feet of water in our house. And talk about devastation. We still had not been able to get any flood insurance uh, because you have there has to be a certain period of time. I don't know exactly how it went because it's been so long I don't remember. But for the second time, we lost much more than we did the first time because this one was eight feet up in the house. So once again, it was everything was lost. New mattresses, new furniture, new carpeting, everything. Sheetrock. Uh, taking uh, choices out of your house uh, and, and everything. And cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And um, I, my marriage certificate was uh, out on one of, on the top of one of our cars where we carried stuff out. And I went to take it out of the um, frame that it was in. It was a beautiful uh, wedding certificate. And um, it was wet. And I started to lift the paper up off of it. And I just lifted it up and didn't think anything about it. And before I knew what had happened, the everything on the certificate disappeared. The writing, it was gorgeous writing was on it. And the signatures of the witnesses who had been on it and everything. And that was two of our sisters. And one of them had passed away. And uh, it was it was just horrendous. And there went our marriage certificate. It was even gone then. And uh, that really hurt us because we had been married several years. It was probably around, um, I don't know, maybe 40 years, something like that. And um, so now that was gone. And uh, so there was nothing to do but try to keep what very few things were left this time. I mean, there was not much of anything that was left this time. And we cleaned it all out again. And uh, my husband started back building again. And uh, for the second time, we restored that without any flood insurance or anything. And the homeowners, once again, would not touch it. And um, it was... Um, You'll never know what it's like unless you lose your home twice. Once is enough, but twice is... Uh, and especially when you're getting near the time that you think you're going to retire and everything like that, and you've got everything situated you think the way that you want it. But, um, no, no. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's why we should be as happy as we can today and um, things like that. But anyway, my picture was lost. So um, now I lost a lot of paintings, too, that I had made. I, I had done a portrait of my mother. And uh, it was really, if I have to say so, it was beautiful. And it looked exactly like her, except I had painted her to look about 10 years younger. And that's what I've heard. that Anytime that you are a, an artist and you paint someone you dearly love, you will paint them somewhat younger than they normally are. And uh, she was probably in her mid-70s when I painted it. Sometime I'll have to tell you a story about um, her sitting for um, uh, one of the uh, ladies that wanted to paint her. Uh, it really is funny. But uh, right now I'll go ahead and talk about um, this. Uh, I have gone ahead and glued some of these things that uh, were really heavy because um, I didn't know if, if uh, really the glue was going to hold it or not. So I bought some additional uh, glues. I was going to use the E6000, I believe it's called, but when I read it and it said that you could um, have brain damage and everything just by breathing it, I thought, no, I don't want to go there. Because, like I said, our family is um, noted to have a lot of cancer in our family. So, I uh, don't want to um, push the button any, shall we say. So, uh, this is what... Now, the picture that I had is somewhat different from this one. Um, it 
so had some blue, a bluish green in the outer part here. And uh, but uh, when I started putting the the bluish green on it, um, I didn't like it because it, to me it looked like it cheapened the shells. And uh, so um, I went ahead and just painted it all the cream color. And uh, you can't see this lower part, but it really was beautiful before I got the shells on top of it because uh, it had some of the blue that I had originally had. I had it a turquoise blue. And um, some of that turquoise blue was coming through and just looking like a shadow uh, under the sand, you might say. So oh, I just went ahead and made it look like it was all sand and this was all under the water. And uh, so I think it's turned out the way it is right now, pretty. Uh, very pretty, uh, but and the shells I dearly love. Uh, some of the things that uh, I I couldn't get a seahorse. Not a, um, a, a see. I got the horseshoe crab. That's what I couldn't get. Uh, I had a horseshoe crab, a small one, uh, on my other one, and I couldn't find one of those because they only sold them. Uh, I looked online and everything, and I only found the large ones which I couldn't have used. And uh, the little seahorses, my seahorse that I had, his little tail was turned up uh, in a curl there on the end. And I ordered three of these and all uh, from online and all three of them came with a straight tail. So I would have preferred having um, the um, tail curled, but I couldn't. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I have to answer this phone. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and as you might know, the phone call was not important. It was um, a telemarketer. Uh, I was thinking it might be my daughter because I was expecting a call from her. Um, but talking about the uh, little seahorse, uh, mine had the little tail that was curled, and I think they're cuter than the ones whose tails are just straight. But I ordered three, and they all three came in with the... Uh, straight tails, so I had to go with this one. And um, I have glued, like I said, as the big things here, I have glued them down because um, I knew that it would take forever to glue all these things down anyway. So I have uh, several still to um, glue down, so I'm going to start gluing those as um, I talk with you. And I burn a big blister on my finger today, so <laughs> I have been having troubles today. And um, but um, I guess that comes with uh, working with glue. We all know about the glue situation. But I, I, I when used to be when we were over at the beach, we would just be walking up and down through there and. Many times we would be in the water swimming, and here would go a little um, a seahorse just swimming right past us, and it was nothing to see a little uh, seahorse. And now you don't see any seahorses, and from what I can tell, there's not all that many online, so I don't know what's happening with them, and uh, like I said, the uh, little horseshoe crab um, I haven't seen any of those either so they were all over there and we had some little things that um, we called butterflies I don't know what the real name for them was but they were just uh, little tiny shells probably about anywhere from a fourth of an inch to um, maybe uh, three-fourths of an inch long and they would, uh, their little shells would open up, and when they opened up, they looked like butterflies. So that's what we called them, was butterflies. And we, uh, would we took those butterflies and put them um, across the top of our uh, picture. And right ar around here, sort of like you would think that they would be if they were butterflies. Uh, just sort of flying around. And they were gorgeous. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. But I don't know if they're still over at the beach or not. I'm wondering about that. 
uh, I'd like to go over and see if I could find any, but uh, I haven't had a chance to go over there. If I do, I'll, I'll try to get some and put it on the picture and um, then show you what they look like because they look exactly like little butterflies and um, they're just beautiful. So, um, uh, you, everything is just being, I think, spoiled and ruined for the beach and everything with all of this pollution and they're dumping everything they get into the ocean instead of trying to take care of it otherwise. So it makes me very angry. But there's not much we, we can do about it, I don't guess. I think we should do something, but I don't know what it would be. Because um, we're not going to have the same world. I've already told my daughter, this is not the same world that I grew up in. And my little granddaughter, she's not going to have any of the things like I had when I was growing up to experience. And I think that's very sad. Very, very sad. I'm get this is a new glue, new glue gun I have. And um, I'm not so fond of it. It does it won't let allow one glue stick to go on down to the next one when one gets through. And uh, it just um, uh, doesn't work exactly right. So, I guess there's always something. At least it doesn't have chemicals in it that um, will cause birth defects and cancer. If it does, it doesn't say anything about it. Ignorance is bliss, I guess. The saying is. These little shells, I think they are gorgeous. They remind me, I don't know if you can see them very clearly or not. Put it up here. Um, reminds me a lot of um, Mary. Uh, it sort of looks like a picture of her, but sort of blurred like. And um, I think that they are just gorgeous. I told uh, my daughter, I said, I would love to have, uh, make a, a necklace out of these and a bracelet to match it. I think that that would be just gorgeous. And I'm going to get some of these and. Um, do that. I think it would be a beautiful project. But you have to have these things where you want them when you lay them down because um, you're not going to move them after you get them down there. They stay right where you put them. And that sort of surprises me. I thought you, usually you can move your glue around a little bit for just a second or so, a couple seconds. But not with this. It's just, you put it down and it's not moving. which is quite hurtful to your fingers. And I'll clean the rest of that glue off when it um, dries. I found it better to let it dry a little bit and then clean it off. Now, I have found something, though, today by trying to clean things off of um, the glue off these wet ones because I burned my finger and I got the wet ones out to uh, 
take some of that sting away, hopefully. And uh, I noticed that when I started putting it on the um, glue, it started dissolving the glue. So that might be something you'd want to check into. It's just the little wet ones in the can, the plastic. And um, it started taking it away just like everything. So I was really thrilled with that because um, a lot of times we need things that will get rid of that. I'm having quite a few strings with uh, this glue too. I don't know if it's the glue or if it is the fault of the um, glue gun. It's hard to tell which one it is. I still have the tag on this one. I have to remove it. Um, some of the uh, shells I went uh, down to um, one of the shell shops and bought. But most of these, you can go right... I've got tons of shells here in the house. And um, you can just walk right along the beach and find them. And uh, our water, it doesn't look like the Atlantic. Those of you who have not seen the Gulf before... Uh, it is a greenish, turquoise blue. It is gorgeous. And um, those big waves will wash up. And then they're big waves. They're not small waves. They're big waves. And they come in and um, start washing in with that water. So gorgeous. And um, it is really a beautiful place. It, it truly is. Hope I'm getting this right because, like I said, there'll be no moving it after it's there. Also found a little device here that um, helps when the glue is hot to um, sort of move it if you got too much on your shell. It will move it away and then you can go in later and clean the rest of it up with that wipe. That's what I was doing today when I was putting them down. But now when it came to my finger, no way was the glue coming off without bringing part of my skin. So I had to just cool it and let it stay. And I've got a big blister now because of it. When I was doing so much gluing with all the um, flowers that I did for my daughter's wedding, I had numerous... Um, blisters and they're not very happy to have I'm hoping to um, get uh, a lot more subscribers on my tube and my channel um, I'm doing better than I was everyone seems to like my shirt that I did, and um, uh, my box. That box was hilarious, though. But I'm glad that I can laugh about it. <laughs> uh, it was funny. But um, everybody does seem to be pleased with it. So I'm glad about that. Thankful for that. And I take these shells and interchange them as I think I might like one somewhere else. I will take it and move it. 
and uh, my daughter says, wait, let me out of here. Don't do that while I'm watching. And I said, how are you going to become a crafter if you can't stand to watch somebody move something? I can't help it. She tickles me. She'll get over it. She's just afraid that it won't be able to be fixed. And um, that's the first thing you have to learn just about concerning crafts. Is you have to change them and move them and do what's necessary. It is hard to get these down in between these places, though. If I had just been placing them as I went, it would probably have been much better. But um, I wanted to make sure that I got the right placement before I put them down. My son loves the beach. I mean, oh my goodness. I don't know if anyone could hardly love the beach more than he does. I think he was born to be near the beach. I have to actually fill these things before I can tell if they have been placed down or not. Now these are some, this is a little shell I'll show you. I, now I'm not familiar with this shell. I haven't seen it in our waters. Um, it looks like angel's wings. And um, that's the front of it. And then you can turn it over. And it looks the back like the back of the wings. And... Um, uh, I had never seen one of these before. So I don't know what they are called. I should have asked uh, the owner of the shell shop, but um, I didn't think. Trying to make sure which side of, that I put the glue on. Okay. See this one. See where I want it. I think I'll drop it right down in there. If this were Angela Holt, she would be putting lace all over here. And I'm sure that it would come out absolutely gorgeous because I got so tickled. I, I was talking with my daughter this morning about Angela and um, what a marvelous crafter she is. And I said, I was just thinking to myself this morning, you could give that girl... A piece of lace and a glue gun and she could make you a Taj Mahal. <laughs> that got me so tickled when I said that because um, I could hear her laughing the way she laughs and I get tickled at her when she gets tickled and uh, but she can she can do anything she wants you give her a piece of lace and you might as well sit back and look out because there's gonna be something gorgeous come out of there. And uh, she has definitely found her calling. Now, I hope I can get this back in the way I've got it here. Uh, but um, I've never seen anyone that can take lace and use it like she does. And, oh, her things are just so gorgeous. I haven't used any lace so far on any of my projects. But I would like to... Um, get some lace pretty soon and start a lace project but um, I'm sort of doing them as I come to them 
and uh, I have watched all of her things. I think I've watched just about every video she has, unless it's some of the older ones that I didn't um, know about. Uh, because when she brought those houses of hers out the other day, I thought I was going to fall over because um, they're so gorgeous. And I thought, she made those houses? Those were, oh, mind-boggling. They were so beautiful. And um, she just gets in there and starts taking that lace, and before you know it, there's stuff, oh, absolutely beautiful stuff coming out of there. And I'm glad that she found her pro her um, goal in life because that definitely was meant to be what she was supposed to do with her life because um, you can't be that good at something and uh, not work at it because, oh, I don't know what I would do if she would ever stop making stuff like that because I would miss it so much. I watch her all the time. I watch a lot of the ladies. Uh, one of the other ladies that I watch is um, uh, Ribbons, Roses, and Lace, I believe it is. And um, I like her crafting also. And I like I love the way that she talks about God and Jesus. And um, that is just right down my alley, as the saying is, because... Uh, that's the way that I believe. And I think it's good to let everyone know how you believe about God. That's why I got such a good feeling about my uh, Easter mountain. Because I know that the children want Easter baskets and everything. But when it's all said and done for the Christian, it's about uh, God and Jesus. So... Um, I thought that was uh, an appropriate thing for that. Now, I have put some of these little things up here hiding as if this were seaweed or some kind of a uh, greenery that grows in the ocean. But um, it looks a little bit like some kind of a seaweed or something. But I saw it at um, one of the stores here in town. Um, can't remember the name of it right now. But uh, I told my daughter, I said, I'm going to get that. I'm going to use it for seaweed in my um, shell picture. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And I do believe that um, it is looking like it should be uh, in the beach, uh, in the water. Because it looks sort of dried and and brownish looking in places and then in other places it um, looks sort of green but it, looks, but it also looks sort of washed and everything like it's been around a lot of water and um, so to me I'm pleased with it and I um, hope you, that you all will be um, because it looks very much so like um, something that you would see at the beach. It's washed maybe up on the beach. I'm trying to get some of those little things to hide. I hid one of my um, starfish back up under there. I might push some of that greenery back up there a little bit and um, get it over a little bit. I think that might be all of them. I'm not sure. Nope, there's one's loose. I have another uh, project that um, I'm going to make you after. I'm, now, see, I've already forgotten where this one came from. I'm going to guess and say right there. And if it isn't, well then, that's the way life goes.
it'll have to be happy in its new home. It probably came from right here. But I can get another one and stick in there. That's one thing. If you live near the beach, you're not going to run out of shells. Now, I won't say that, though. Might be. Well, here's one that's not uh, down. And I'm sure that most of you have um, heard the legend of the sand dollar. Um, it's amazing when you do hear it, if you haven't. Uh, I was reading... Uh, I have one uh, within the um, thing. Just a minute and I'll get it and read it to you. It, um, I have a brand new chair that I bought for my studio. And uh, lo and behold, I can't use it because um, I have, I had, in the, 84, that was a long time ago, I had a massive blood clot in my left leg, and uh, it destroyed all the little valves inside my veins and my legs, and uh, so I have to be very particular with my legs and um, when I'm sitting down. And this chair, the, the other chair, uh, my new one, it comes up too hard around my hips, and I kept having... Um, I would be in here working, and um, I would start to get up, and my leg would be so numb that it would be, I had no control over it, and it wouldn't uh, let me know that it was getting numb or anything. And uh, so, uh, and then it would start hurting until I could not stand it. So I thought, what in the world is wrong with my leg now? And um, I was afraid I was getting another blood clot, because it was the same one that the, the clot had been in originally. And uh, I noticed it uh, three or four times. And then I thought, oh, I bet it's the new chair that uh, is, I have gained a lot of weight. I've gained, <laughs> I've gained about 50 pounds in the last um, probably seven months to eight and uh, not good at all for someone who uh, has diabetes and um, had a blood clot and all those good things. But anyway, um, I decided that's what it was. So I haven't been sitting, so I've been sitting in this older chair and it squeaks and pops and everything else, but at least it doesn't make me have problems. But here is the legend of the sand dollar. One of nature's most unusual shells the five, let me get this out of this package, I can't see it very well here. That's another thing I'm going to get, I'm going to get my glasses, uh, new glasses. Uh, one of nature's most unusual shells, the five slits in the shells uh, represent the five wounds in the body of Christ. The Easter lily design has its center has in its center a five-pointed star, the Star of Bethlehem. On the back is, a, a, is the outline of the poinsettia, the Christmas flower. When the shell is broken open, five perfect replicas of a dove are found. They are the doves of peace. I thought that was just so fantastic that... Um, people who don't believe in God. When you see that the sand dollar, the little sand dollar, has all of those things that point right back to God and the Creator who made it. And uh, when you see things like this, how in the world could you think that they came from a piece of mud or a piece of dust or something like that? Um, according to the Big Bang Theory or something like that. I think that it's just absurd. And um, anyway, that's my belief. And it makes me feel, I have broken some of these before when we um, would get uh, one at the beach. And it, a lot of times you'll go over there and there will be uh, little sand dollars broken already in two. And, but they're not broken right around where the... Um, other things are that's inside. And when you break it open, 
you will see those five little things. And they look like little doves, little white doves. And um, here is the uh, one flower. Um, going the wrong way. And uh, then here is the um, poinsettia. And um, uh, it's just remarkable how things like that are done. And if you look in the center of just about any flower that you see, there will always be, uh, looks like a star in it. And um, I think that is just so amazing how God marked all those things so that people would see that he was the one who made those and um, everything. And yet they can still say all those things that they say. But I just let them keep talking and I just keep doing the way I want to do. So that's the only way you can do. Take it in stride and don't listen. It's the young minds that worry me. The young people who have no one to um, instruct them. And um, uh, what they're supposed to believe and all these things. And my little granddaughter, she... Um, she is something else. Um, I could tell you a little story about her. I'm sure that um, she wouldn't mind. I've always talked to her about God and Jesus and everything since she was just a baby. I've had her singing with me, singing little religious songs, children's songs. And so she came over to um, spend a weekend with me one time. And um, my bedroom is um, big. And um, <laughs> when we meet as a family, uh, my bedroom is basically where we meet a lot of times because uh, I have in my bedroom, I have my television and I have an armoire and I have um, a secretary and I have a computer and I have um, just all kinds of different things that... Uh, anybody would need to use, and uh, so um, we were sitting in there one uh, night talking, and um, we were talking about God and about Jesus and everything, and how wonderful Jesus is and how he loves children and all these things, and how um, you had to have Jesus as your Savior, um, and um, she uh, looked at me right funny, and I was sitting in my, I have a recliner in there, and uh, I was sitting in my, my recliner, and she was sitting on the edge of the chair, and she looked at me, and she said, Mama, she says, how am I going to know that I'm a Christian? And I said, well, honey, you have to ask God to be your Savior, and uh, accept Him as your Savior, and then you will be uh, saved. And she says, well, I want to ask him that. And I said, um, I can't get down on my knees because uh, of the blood clot that I had. Because, like I say, it destroyed my legs just about. And I said, well, you come right over here to your mama. And I said, you can uh, kneel down right here in, at mama's knees. And I said, we'll pray. She came over there and she had little tears sliding down her face. And I said, I said, Mama, we'll say a prayer, and you repeat it after me. And so I, I uh, said a prayer that God would, would be her Savior and that uh, uh, he would claim her as his child and that he would take care of her always and everything like that. And uh, that she was a true uh, child of God now. And she opened her eyes and I said, now, do you accept Jesus as your Savior? She said, yes, Mama, I do. I said, then you are a Christian, honey. From that day to this, that is the praying chair. Regardless of where we are in the house, she'll say, Mama, I think I saw that in there near the praying chair. And the first time I heard that, it just sort of uh, stunned me. Uh, 
because I didn't think of it in those terms. But to her, that was the praying chair. And I thought, oh my gracious, how does that make me feel to think that she thinks of that now as her praying chair? And it made me feel quite, quite wonderful, I can tell you. And uh, that little girl, she'll come over and talk with me. And uh, when, this was when she was probably about 10, 9 and 10. She'd come over and she'd be talking with me and she'd say, Mama, um, yes, I'm, I've met this certain little person and they're having problems, but um, not many people want to talk with them. But she says, I always talk with them. I said, well, honey, that's good. You should. And she said, um, uh, it's not right to not talk with people and make them feel unwanted. And I said, no, it isn't, sweetheart. And uh, she said, Mama, she said, do you remember the little testament that you gave me a good while ago? And um, I said, yes, honey, I remember that. And she said, well, she said, this one little person was having trouble and said, I thought, I'm just going to take them, take my testament that Mama gave me and give it to that person. And um, she said, I don't know if they are reading it or not. And um, she said, they asked me how I could prove that there was a God. And uh, she said, I didn't know what to say, Mama. She said, I said, well, you know there's a God. And I said, honey, the next time anyone asks you that, she, uh, the person had told her that she couldn't show them God. I said, the next time anyone asks you that, sweetheart, I said, just look at them and say, do you believe in the wind? Well, you can't see that wind, but you can feel it, can't you? And when Jesus is talking with us, or God, we can feel that. And she looked at me and she said, Oh, that's what I'll tell them, Mama. So she she was all pleased with that. And uh, I was thrilled that the Lord had given me that to tell her because that was not on my own. That was strictly through God telling me that. And uh, now she has a way of saying, when they say, well, you can't prove to me that there's a God. She has a way of coming back to say, well, you can't see the wind, but... You sure know it's there. There's another little one that's not glued. Oh, and there's one. That's a big one that isn't glued. I better glue it first. It got some of the glue from this other one. But I've been very happy that God has allowed me to live to where um, I could talk with her about these things and um, let her know. And her papa was um, equally, he made a video for her and uh, left it for her. Um, he passed away, but um, he left her a video and telling her about God and how good he was and everything. And um, so uh, she has listened to that several times, and uh, when he passed away, she, we were at his funeral, and uh, she was wanting to see her papa because she loved him dearly. And she says, "I want my papa." Well, I thought she was talking about um, her other papa, and I said, "Honey, he's he's in the back of the church. You could just go back there." She says. No, 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 she says, I want the one that's up there because there were videos up in front of um, things that her papa had done while he was here. And um, she said, that's the papa I want up there. And she started crying. So um, she didn't accept his death for a long time. But um, then she finally understood that he was in heaven and... Uh, that one day she would be with him. And now she is thrilled because she thinks that one day she will see her papa again. And that they will have fun again together.
because whatever she wanted, her papa gave her. And well, grandma, not grandma, but mama and papa. I've always called myself mama to her. And um, I've always called myself mom to my children. Because I said, well, there's a lot of people who can be moms, but I mean mothers. And that's nothing against people who do have their children call them mother. That's just the way that I feel. I said that a lot of people can be mothers, but uh, it takes a certain person to be a mom. And that's the way I have felt, and that's why they always call me mom. And my daughter, when she starts putting this film, uploading this film, she's going to say, Mom, what in the world are you doing? You shouldn't be talking like this because you know it upsets me. <laughs> um... She doesn't like to talk about things like that. She is um, very emotional when it comes to her family. Okay, I have one more thing that I know is not glued. And that's the little uh, seahorse. Oh, there's another one. It's just so hard to see all of these. And nine times out of ten, I have not been getting them the right way when I put them back down. There's no way that you can arrange them and then get them back in the same order. I was trying to measure them last night and put them back where I had them before. But there's no way. No way possible. My daughter has already told me, Mom, you know that I want one of those, don't you? And I said, yes, I knew you would want one. She says, well, that's what I want. glue strings. Well, here's another big one, too, that I didn't know. Really. I painted this uh, canvas last night, and uh, I was first going to put it with teal on it and uh, have try to get it as close to our water as possible but um, when I got it painted it to me it sort of cheapened the um, shells and it didn't they didn't look as pretty as they did otherwise and uh, because I had had them on a white canvas not for any particular reason other than placement and um, so um, they looked beautiful on their white canvas. And I was almost tempted to try the white canvas, but uh, I knew that doesn't look anything at all like the beach. So um, I um, started um, trying to think what in the world could I use other than the blue the green because our water like I say is a bluish green color it's it's gorgeous the deep looks like the Caribbean water and um, so uh, I painted the blue and uh, then I saw that wasn't going to get it so I had to go back over it with uh, this sandy color and when I did the blue was uh, shining through some of it and it just um, those of you that do oil painting or in just about any kind of painting will know what I'm talking about. It um, was leaving places that look like um, shadows, uh, like you were shading uh, that part of it. And it was looking so beautiful. And I told my daughter, I said, I love that color. 
I really do love it. And I said, it looks so familiar, I can't understand where I've seen that before. And um, I kept working with it, and they were going to, they've been staying with me for a while because um, they have had a problem with their house. And uh, they've been having to uh, remodel uh, because they had a leak and it grew, they didn't know there was a leak. And it had grown uh, mold and they had to tear out two bathrooms and um, completely redo them. And that was nasty. I don't know where, I think I'm going to drop that right there. I don't know where it goes, but I'm going to put it right there. And uh, so, um, anyway, she is, um, they're working on their house now. And uh, they've got it all cleaned out now. And they, the people came and treated it and everything for the mold. But that stuff is, oh, it's horrible. You don't ever want to neglect a leak if you know you have one because, uh, that black mold will take over and it goes before you know what happened. And it's too bad. Well, we knew that Tanya and her husband were having one sinus infection right after the other and they would be on antibiotics and that was not normal for either one of them. And um, they were running a fever and uh, they never felt well. And um, it was just one thing right after the other. And they would just get over one, and they would take it again. And she said, Mom, I don't know what's going on. She said, something's wrong. Then she started smelling this slight mildew smell. And she she's the type that cannot take a smell. She, if there's anything smelling, she's going to get to the bottom of it because she can't stand anything that smells bad. And she started looking, and um, she came up with, that it was coming from the um, one of the bathrooms. And it was, um, I think it was near the, one of the tubs. I'm not sure about that, but anyway, it was in the bathroom. So she told her husband, she said, can't stand it. She said, you're gonna have to find out what's going on. So he started taking uh, some of the uh, wall down. And there was the mildew. So they had to completely take all of that out of their house, all of the sheetrock in both the master bath and the hall bath. And um, like I say, had the guy come in to spray and they washed it down first, which scrubbed it really well and uh, everything. But um, it's my understanding from what the guy says that um, Clorox only takes care of that for it's a short, very short time, and then it the, it stops. It's no good after that. It has to be what they call, gosh, I got scared, fogged, and um, so uh, he came in and fogged it. And um, watch me drop this. And so now. They're in the process of um, getting everything fixed. I have to stand up and look for this. Um, getting it fixed. So they've been with me for about probably a week and a half, something like that. And um, they're out today looking for it tonight. They came home from work and they went to look for tubs and things like that. She's already picked most of the stuff out, but um, she had to, they had to go pick some tubs out, and they have their tile and everything, so that's going to be a job putting all that back in, they're going to do it themselves, so, uh, but they're both good workers at things like that, he's very good at, with his hands, and she's right there with him, working, and that's the way it should be. When they moved in their house, it was um, a um, house that had been repossessed. And um, it had not been taken very good care of. But we went in there, and I was able to help them. And we painted, and I did her 
whole kitchen for her. Uh, I antiqued her kitchen cabinets for her. And her bathroom cabinets. And uh, her utility room was built in, all in cabinets. And I was able to do them also. And uh, then I helped her paint. And the three of us together didn't take us very long. And um, their house was beautiful. And uh, she can't wait to get back in it. I told her she's going to have to let me have, do a house tour this Christmas. And she said she'd think about it. I think she will. I can't get that glue off right now. I'm going to wait a bit. And then I'll take it off. But now this video, and then I have one other video... Uh, will be about the beach and um, then I'm going to go into some uh, other things. But I'm glad that you guys like the shirt. I'm going to have to um, get another one. I'm going to have to design another one and make it. Uh, I've got the idea, I think, basically of what I want to fix it. Um, I think, and, um, hmm, see, I've already forgotten where that came from. Well, we can use it right here. Not where it came from, but we can use it there. So, um. I think that this is pretty well. I, I uh, went ahead and glued this um, vine down before I started the camera up. And I put the um, starfish down. Because I knew that it would take... There's another one that isn't. Keep looking to see if there's anywhere I could use it more so than right there. Hmm. I really don't see. I don't like them up around the starfish too much because I think that they. Um, all they do is compete with the starfish. And I want the starfish to uh, sort of be on their own. And uh, I think that um, they look pretty uh, by themselves. But this is a perfect solution if you have uh, a lot of um, shells. I know we used to come to the beach and I would collect shells and collect shells. And we had a big uh, shell shop over there, and I would go in and buy some of the shells that um, you can only buy down if you go down to the tip end of um, the beach down there below Fort Pickens. And uh, <laughs> so I wasn't about to go down there. Now, my son went out in there, but not me. Too afraid of sharks and the water. So... Uh, I would go to the uh, shell shop and, and buy the ones I wanted. But wait, I had containers full of them. But um, then I started using them to decorate with. And you'd be surprised. A lot of people really like to decorate with um, beach uh, accents and things. And I think they're really pretty. But... Um, I guess this one's just about through if I can find all of the shells are put down. And it looks like they might just be all down there. 
My daughter will be happy once again. She's always happy when uh, I finish one of my projects because she thinks it's good for me to uh, stay involved with all of these. She always wants me involved in something. So I won't sit around and just think about things I shouldn't be thinking about. Okay, that looks to me like now I have one more of the little um, angel wings. I would like to know what that looks like on the inside, but I would not break it to find out. So, like I say, I've never seen one before. But um, I think this is all done. So, now, when my daughter comes home, now, I'm going to put this in a, sh in a uh, frame. Mine was in a dark frame. I have a frame for this, but um, I'm thinking about putting it in a white frame, uh, which would, of course, be holding with the beach. Um, but I'll have to see how it looks first before I totally decide what I'm going to do. But um, when I... Um, I'll decide that tonight after she comes home and um, I get the uh, thing out. But I might be able to uh, put, turn this around to where you can see it better. Um, and when she comes home, she can take the camera and um, give you a um, better view of it. It's running back <laughs> between my camera, my tripod legs, so I, it's not going to clear it with the shells on it. So I'm going to have to wait until she comes home, and I'll just go ahead and uh, turn the camera off, and when she comes home, I'll have her uh, do a, um, a shot of it in its entirety, uh, and that's so that you can see the whole thing. And I'll talk with you guys later. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody, I'm back. Um, I have the um, um, picture standing up now. It, it doesn't fit in this um, frame because the frame is about an eighth of an inch too small to let it go in it. But, uh, so I'm going to have to get a different frame for it. And uh, I knew that I'd have to have a different color than this anyway. But this is the way that it looks. Um, you can see it pretty well. Um, there's some light that uh, needs to be moved over a little bit. But um, move that over out some. <laughs> we're, we're having our trials and troubles. Uh, that's looking a little bit better. Uh, that way you can see everything better. But uh, that will let you see the um, different shells and everything that I was telling you about. I'll show you a close-up as I can of one of these that uh, I thought was so pretty. And there's a the little seahorse and all of the other little things that's on it. And, um, okay, I think that's enough. Um, uh, so, um, I'll see you all again, and, um, uh, next time it's going to be another beach tutorial. Um, not this big, though. So, uh, I'll see you guys later, and you all come back, and we'll craft some more. Bye-bye.